This is an old gaming PC which was uh, given to me by a friend because it was entirely ruined and I tried getting everything in working order but the motherboard was just beyond salvage. Uh, however, uh, this thing has a rather nice case. It's a fractal define uh, R5, uh, missing a bunch of parts like the hard drive, caddies and so forth, but uh, it's got enough pieces to make a decent case uh, for my own usage. Uh, since I don't use more than one SSD in my main computer, uh, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, it was rather horribly dirty and abused and generally nasty, so I've taken the entire thing to to bits and I've been cleaning it up and we're just about getting to the point where I'm going to customize it for my own needs because of course I can't leave anything stuck because that's just boring. So uh, what we're looking at here is the stock feet for the case and they are ugly, dingy and missing the rubber pads going underneath them and uh, that's fine because I've figured out I don't like them anyway. Uh, as you can see the case has cooling from the bottom up. Those are bottom vent rather by the feet and the feet lift them about uh, half a centimeter off the floor which I don't think is enough. Uh, that's just going to limit airflow quite severely if you go for a bottom to top design which is what I'm intending to do. So I have taken to the magic of Jenga blocks to construct a bunch of new feet. So I've taken a nail gun, nailed together a couple of old Jenga blocks in a T shape and drilled a hole in the middle and I've drilled some corresponding holes in the case and this is what the new feet are going to look like. So they're going right in the corners of the case and they're going to take the case uh, by two and a half centimeters off the floor which is going to give it a considerable advantage in airflow. Uh, it's of course not the most nice looking of solutions but I do think it fits my style and above all it's going to be very very efficient since I'm going to build this PC uh, with a bottom to top airflow design uh, basically trying to use as little fan power as possible because my older case uh, which is a rather heavily modified Antec from about 2004 is a seriously quiet computer. I've spent many an hour just optimizing the crap out of the airflow system in it and it runs extremely quiet and it's got such a good airflow I've even been able to take the power supply fan completely out. So we do have quite a benchmark to beat for this case and I am looking forward to the challenge. So let's get these feet mounted and see what other good ideas we can... Compressor. Alright, the hours are rushing by and we are moving ever forward. So, as you might blatantly be able to see, I've cut out the bottom fan vents, uh, or rather grills, uh, because I just don't think they suit me. The hexagonal uh, cut they use for this case, uh, while quite uh, generous by modern case standards, it's uh, too restrictive for my tastes. Uh, this is the underside of the case and there's an air filter going over these anyway. Uh, there's no risk of shoving a finger in there uh, at all and it's going to cut down on airflow and raise noise. And uh, beyond that I have taken the time to install a lot, and I do mean a lot, of sand damping material. We have this uh, asphalty stuff tacked to pretty much every corner, it's so black you can barely see it uh, against the blackness of the case, but uh, rest assured this case is very well dampened. In fact you can knock pretty much anywhere and it's going to be rather dampened. Uh, this corner here is the worst spot because it's hard to get in there. I have paid extra attention to the front fan mount. Uh, so this is very, very damped indeed. Uh, and some of you may be asking yourselves, why have you bolted a piece of wood to the bottom of a fan grill? Well, this is in order to give me some options because as you, if you are more keen, I might be able to tell, I've also drilled fan holes down where the power supply is supposed to go. Now, that may raise a further question, if, if you're going to put a fan there, where's your power supply going to go? And that is where I want some options. So, I am of course planning to mount the power supply in the front, uh, since I'm 
Not one for aesthetics, I've just drilled a couple of 6mm holes there to take a zip ties to hold a power supply on there like so. So my current power supply has no fan in it, I've removed it and in the future I'm planning to upgrade to proper uh, passively cooled one. So this would be an excellent spot right on top of the frontmost fan. However, I'm not entirely sure as to how things are going to go. So I had a rather uh, obvious idea afterwards. Because if you just flip your power supply around, you can have it mounted by the fan screws to the front fan mount, suck air from the front and expel it straight up. So we're going to have to see which approach we choose to go for. Uh, I'm obviously going to use three fans in the bottom and that's pretty much going to be it. Yeah, around the back we've done pretty much just nothing. So uh, to further move on with the paste supply idea, I have chopped out the grill of a cheapo random power supply, fix on that please, and uh, this is of course going to be mounted down there. I'm going to have to do some safety adjustments and put a cord on it, uh, but uh, that's just going to go there. Uh, as far as uh, airflow is concerned, I am uh, questioning the sanity of maintaining these holes. Uh, we're going to have to see how everything pans out, and if these holes expel too much air that hasn't flown through heatsink yet, I'm going to have to cover these up and put some damping material on them, but we'll see how things go. I'm hoping the air is mostly just going to go straight up and I won't have to care about them. Uh, we are going to have faced some challenges in the acoustics of this thing since it's such an open case. We have this giant grill on top which is going to uh, let a lot of sound escape from my PC which is quite the opposite of the case of the PC I have right now. Speaking of which, here it is. So this is a 2004 Corsair uh, something or other case uh, which I have had my way on. I've had this thing for ages and it's served me very well. Uh, it's running a few fans. Uh, I've cut out all the grills on this as well, of course. And again, we have no power supply fan. So uh, let's turn it on and see what kind of noise level uh, we are looking to match. So that's the PC turned on. And that's as loud as it gets because this thing barely has any fan control. All the fans are on resistors, making it so that the fan speed curve is very, very soft. And at most, it will get very slightly louder than this. As you can tell, there's not a lot of speed on those. So let's have a look inside just to get an idea as to how this has been achieved. The spec on this PC, by the way, is an i7-3770 and I believe it's the GeForce 750Ti graphics card as well, so rather efficient golden green, uh, oh no, a super flower, uh, 80 plus gold rated power supply, rather old one of that, should be replaced. So, the setup, of course, includes a lot of duct tape and plastic air guides and a sticky ram holding the GPU up. So, uh, the tactic I've gone for with this PC is to have the mo main intake fan, that's the loudest one, sitting a bit inside the case because all of this stuff in front will diffuse the sound a lot so you barely get anything coming out. Uh, the rear fan, which is uh, mounted directly to the case, although it is uh, mounted on shock absorption uh, is one of these ultra quiet, ultra low rev Noctua's. You can literally see the blades moving on that. And the two fans for the GPU and CPU are, uh, what are we called, a gentle typhoons running at a very, very low speed. Uh, and uh, since this is not a super high power rig, I can get away with just uh, running everything so, so slowly, so incredibly slowly. That's not fast, and of course, we have no fan at all in there, even though this pairs of light came with one. So, a challenge to meet indeed.
even with the case off, which of course is very sound dampened. Now if you're curious as to how I've uh, come to the arrangement of removing the power supply fan without it going up in smoke, uh, you need to consider the direction of all the fans. The intake fan in the front is uh, bringing air into the GPU and thus shoving it through upwards through the CPU and out the power supply. And you'll note that the rear fan is pointing inwards. So this case is sitting at a positive pressure. And in order to maintain that and to make sure every single bit of air goes out of the power supply and thus cooling it, uh, I've mounted uh, basically weatherproofing along all the edges of the case with matters. So this is a rather airtight case as well. Uh, the only real uh, holes on it are the intake of intakes and the outlet in the power supply. And uh, this has been a very, very reliable uh, setup actually. The power supply runs uh, not particularly hot since it's such a low power computer, but it has lasted for uh, at least uh, three years by now. All right, so we're now about to put the front panel assembly back together uh, because I've taken it all out and apart because I really want to scrub everything down since the computer was just such a smelly, horrible, disgusting mess when I got it. So every single wire has been manually wiped down and uh, it's lost most of its odour. So I've also taken the liberty of replacing the uh, power LD or rather the hard drive LD with a warm white one. Uh, it was a bit of a chore because I had to grind down a 5mm LED to fit into this weird fixture where I've used one of these odd uh, square LEDs for one of the LEDs. Uh, but it's turned out fine, it uh, looks rather nice. Uh, I have very low tolerance for blue LEDs, I'd rather not feel like I have a cop car sitting in my PC room at all times. And that's the front panel reassembled with all its uh, requisite spaghetti. So, now we're all starting to get to the point where this case is uh, ready to start taking some components. And that means that we are coming upon the very, very fun job of trying to untangle this thing. Because that is not going to be a very easy task. Oh, that's my SSD. I was looking for that. Ah, oh, that's my old case. All empty inside. This has not been the case for so many years. Ah, oh, I can't believe it. And just look at the amount of dust on top of that power supply. That's been sitting in there for a very long time. I was reminded of one of the annoying parts of this uh, chassis where you actually have to take the motherboard out in order to get the power supply out just because of this silly bargain across the roofing there. You just can't fit a power supply in that gap. Whoops, bit of a design issue. But I really can see all of the uh, same proofing and uh, pressure proofing uh, tricks going on when it's so empty. All these socks serve a purpose, they separate this lower chamber there from the rest of the case. Ah, uh, rest in peace, although it will assuredly be reused. And there's a look inside the super flower pay supply. This thing's about to five years old, has been running fanless for maybe three of them. And since this is a properly efficient uh, dual conversion design where the where at first everything is uh, rectified into 12 volts and then it the other rails are derived from that so it's essentially one big single rail power supply with a bunch of smaller rails uh, branching off out of that uh, it's looking as fresh as the date left for factory all the very high quality Japanese caps with 10 phase and outrated every single electrolytic in this thing are in prime shape so this thing's definitely ready to live another five years fan or no fan and there we have the mounted power supply 
So to stop it going upwards, I've just bolted another piece of wood uh, up over the top, and it's uh, pretty much covering up all the front fence, which is pretty much what I wanted. So it's obviously sitting around in a mess right now, because no wires have been managed, but I do think this might work quite well. So I have completed the uh, AC input device there, so it's just a plate, uh, plenty of hot glue and shrink wrap there to keep any fingers out of it, although you could probably get yourself killed by doing that. So don't do that. Uh, and we have the mains cord going all the way over there. Uh, so, of course, we do still have the switch there, so you can still turn uh, the PC off on the switch. Uh, that is, of course, implemented. I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, and the ground is, of course, connected as well, even though it is going to the case uh, right by the connector. So, really, uh, all I've got to do now is just to get all the other stuff in there, uh, fit all the new used fans. Uh, we did get a bunch of fans with the uh, case, uh, which I have cleaned up uh, quite thoroughly because they were nasty, but they don't seem to have too many hours on them. They're in good mechanical nick. Uh, they were incredibly dirty and horrible when I got them, but I uh, used to just to water out of the tap, put them under the tap, a bit of tape around the edge of that to stop most of the water getting in and just splattered them and uh, then drop them out with compressed air and let them dry uh, overnight. So these guys are probably ones which came with a case for a fractal design, something or the other. Uh, they took a bit of dynamic thing. They probably have one of those fanciest sleeve bearings. If they sound good, they don't sound like traditional sleeve bearings. So I'm hoping they're going to survive sitting horizontally. Uh, we've got one of these guys, which is a Noctua NFA14 PWM. Uh, probably fancy, good fan. Uh, it works, it's not worn out. Wow, metal pieces there. Ooh, fancy. Uh, so, yeah, probably going to use this. Uh, and there's another one of those, and I think we also got you. We got a couple of Corsair ones. Whilst this, these seem to be the cheapest one. Uh, Corsair 12 volt DC. Does that even have a model number? These have horrid blue LEDs in them, and they seem to be normal sleeve bearing fans, so not going to be using these. Although they can go in the spare fan bin. Always good to have 140 mil since they're so expensive usually. All right, we're starting to get somewhere. So we've got uh, most of the PC mounted. Uh, some p bits and pieces are still missing, but I'm uh, working on the wiring loom and we've come across a problem, namely with a GPU, because it's got the power connector right there, uh, close to the edge of the case. And that is not very ideal given my power supply mounting because that makes for a very long looming run. Because as you can see, the power connector for PCI Express is coming out right at the bottom of the case. So, moving the GPU to a lower slot isn't an option because the lower PCIe slots are just the times four on this motherboard, I think. So it's going to possibly limit the performance a bit. And uh, that looming is not going to reach the card by any means. It's about 10 centimeters short. So... We have to work around that, and for that we've got the soldering iron heated up and some pieces out of old scrap put on the, put in the grips. So, this thing here is the PCIe connector of a balked graphics card, a 6850, which I've trimmed the pins on, and uh, this here is uh, part of a looming out of an old uh, 900 watt power supply. So we're just going to make our own PCIe power extension. Uh, but just soldering this together and shrink wrapping it, I think it's going to turn out quite neat. Uh, I especially like the fact that they've actually used two wires in this uh, PCIe power connector, two thicker gauge wires, just to make it a bit easier to work with. Very good thinking on whoever made this of how to buy this was ripped out of. But yeah, let's. Uh, Hope we don't get too much voltage drop in the wires. So this is going to be a rather long run, but I'm not planning on running any high powered GPUs anyway. Well, there we go. That's our connector. It's best possible to positively affect something to these, but uh, it's going to stick on there good enough once I get some 
shrink wrap spammed onto that. Uh, well, yeah, there's our Ouroboro completed and rid of our service. I just to get it installed. All right, and now we're getting into the fun stuff where we make this PC weird. So you may be asking yourself, why do you have a mains breaker lying around in your PC mod project? Well, uh, I use my PC to power some non-PC peripherals. So uh, in the past I've been using a Merlex connector around the back of the case, but that's ugly. So this time we're installing a couple of DC plugs to poke out of the back. And in the past I've just had an ugly, ugly fuse hanging out the back of the case it just soldered onto the wires and that's horrible to replace if something goes short uh, and I don't want to run something unfused to a power supply that can deliver many tens of amps that's going to cause a house fire. So I've got a programmable mains breaker this thing can go from about one and a half to four amps and that's pretty decent to, for pairing the monitor and stuff which I run off of a PC power supply. So, uh, I'm going to use the fact that this case has no 525 inch base uh, installed to uh, install this breaker instead. So this plate here is completely removable. It's uh, been out as far as I've been working thus far. And I'm just going to mount a rail on this, something like that, and uh, have a breaker accessible through the 525 inch slots. Uh, that's going to fit perfectly well within reach there. So that's what we're going to do and have a lovely bit of mod kit. Oh there we go, that's the din rail mounted I just used to uh, electrician screws for cons which are self tapping there to just mount it very quickly. Uh, not a work of beauty, I don't care. So break it goes on like so. I'm just going to Okay, the front of the case, so let's see how it looks. Oh okay, yeah, it's gonna sit roughly like that. Uh, of course, less wonky once it gets properly mounted. I don't want to attach it before it's all wired up because you can't really access the screws uh, since it's so tight uh, on the underside of that. But uh, now we just got to manufacture the wiring loom for the rear DC plugs. They're gonna have to have quite a long wiring run there uh, and uh, cut out. All right, and there's our wiring. So, uh, as you can see, I've shrink wrapped the positive terminals there just so we don't have any exposed 12 volts floating around in the case, and the ground is just a wire soldered straight onto the metal casing of the plugs because uh, that's just the easiest way to do it. The red wires are split up and they go together to go into one thick, fat 1.5 square millimeter a rubber hose uh, of a wire which is going to be running to the front of a breaker. So that's all fine and good. And this is what we have in the other end. So I've taken uh, the plug of an old fan adapter and uh, just plugged it straight into the breaker with a suitable cable shoes attached and we'll have a similar arrangement on the rubber hose. So I have uh, connected a 5 volt line as well since we have three connectors on this breaker to use to just at our disposal in, in case I want to pair a USB hub or something like that in the future. So that's pretty much it. Everything's labelled and ready to go. So now all we've got to do is to get it in there. And that's the breaker installed of the case. Uh, very easy access. Uh, looking probably industrial, just how you like it right here. So I did end up redoing a bit of the wiring for this because the original adapter I made it wasn't quite long enough to make sense having installed in volume. It had issues reaching far enough and because we do have quite the rat's nest on this side of the case since we don't have a modular power supply uh, and this one has rather fat and many wires to boot. So we have the new adapter connecting up right there and snaking its way over to the breaker. I have done a sneak test and everything's working just fine. So uh, that moves us on because I've also installed 
the fans have a bottom and now we're really starting to get into the fun stuff and that is the thermals. Uh, I've got to finish up the wiring loom uh, and figure out how to do the fans. Alright, so most of the looming has been done. It's uh, looking absolutely awful on the other side, but the back cover does go on the PCM. That's good enough for me. I frankly do not give a toss what it looks like, and this thing is going to look a whole lot worse when we're done with it. Uh, but now we can actually move on to the fun part, which is the thermals. So I've installed three fans in the bottom. Uh, these two are the fractal fans which came with the case. They are actually pretty good. They uh, are very quiet at 5 volts. However, over here we have a Noctua uh, NF A14 PWM, uh, which is actually way too loud even at 5 volts. Uh, just have a listen when we power it up. Well, it might not be very loud, it is certainly audible, and that means it's not good enough for me. So, we're going to have to go custom to fix that. So, I had a dig through the old magical fan adapter box, and came upon two of these Zalman fan-made two fan controllers. These are rather old fan controls based upon a potentiometer resistor and a 7085. Very simple devices. They take 12 volts in and give you uh, whatever 8 bit voltage you decide down to 5 volts. Uh, however, since we want to go below 5 volts, that's the entire point of this. So we're going to have to modify these a bit. I've done some maths and I think if we just add a 47 ohm resistor on the output, we're going to be able to drop the output voltage down to a point where the Noctua simply will not start, allowing us to use a potentiometer on the fan made too to trim the output voltage to where the fan will just about reliably start, which is about four and a half volts. And that will take out that little bit of noise it does have. All right, so here's the inside of one of these Zalman fan mates too. And they are very simple devices. So under the heatsink we have a 7805 and uh, there's a well-known trick with the 7800 series regulators where you can modify the feedback loop and that is if you raise the ground of the uh, regulator over the system ground it will regulate according to the voltage it sees on its ground pin. So if you raise the ground pin, the middle pin, uh, higher than ground, uh, you will get a voltage uh, that's 5 volts relative to that higher point and thus higher than the output value and that's indeed what we've done here. So you can see with the ground pin, the middle pin of a 7085 is running all, all the way over there to a resistor and the potentiometer and then down to ground. And the potentiometer and, and the resistor is also pulling uh, the voltage from the output there. So, uh, this is just a device that's able to go down to 5 volts uh, all the way up to 12 volts on a 12 volt supply. Very useful for a PC fan. However, the 5 volt limit is what we're trying to get under. So, in like on a real cooking show, here's one we prepared earlier. So, uh, as you can see, I have put a 47 ohm resistor in series with the output going to the red wire there. And I've also drilled two holes and installed a 1000 microfarad 16 volt capacitor across the output. And that is because we add this 47 ohm resistor, uh, we have a very high output impedance on this regulator. And if we were to have no output capacitor, uh, most fans, including my no Noctua, uh, won't be able to draw enough current through a resistor to actually start up, so they just sit there shaking and not ever getting started. Uh, the 47 ohm output resistance means we have to have a reservoir on the output. This big cap is doing that. So, with this device, we can turn our Noctua all the way down to zero and beyond. And get around our noise issues. So, 
I'm going to modify the other units as well, and uh, then we'll think about how to implement them. Uh, of course, the Nocturne is the only fan which actually needs one of these. The rest of the fans in the system run quite well on 5 volts, uh, but since I do have two of these regulators, I'm of course going to use them. Ah, and there we have them installed. And what's more, I've had a play around coming up with a thermal design for this thing. So, uh, all of this office paper is of course air ducting, and that is in order to direct airflow from the bottom case fans onto heat sinks and things in need of cooling. Because if, if these weren't here, we'd have a bunch of air just rising up there, going past everything and not really doing any good. Uh, the goal of course of putting air into the PC is to make it grab heat and take it away. So, uh, this paper is directing the airflow from the two rear case fans onto the passive graphics card radiator as well as the CPU heatsink and it is making a huge difference. Uh, on the heatsink as well I have ended up using a, a push-pull gentle typhoon config. These are running at about 3 volts-ish and that's enough to cool the PC under full load. Uh, it's still somewhat louder than I'd like it to be. Uh, these fans don't have the quietest driver in the world, although they are very, very quiet fans. Uh, we're going to have to take a look at that. And uh, also, uh, this is the angsty part of a PC uh, where every piece hates every other piece because the fans hate the heatsink, these clips don't fit right. The heatsinks hate the RAM because it doesn't really like, uh, fit at all. I've even had to modify a stick of a RAM in order to squeeze everything in. So it's a bit ugly, all of it, uh, but it does work. Uh, the Noctua is connected onto one of the fan controllers and the CPU fans are connected to the other. So at this stage, uh, I'm pretty much gonna uh, cut up these air guides uh, out of plastic since they do seem to work quite well. I've been feeling around and essentially any air that's coming out of the top that's not warm is uh, air that should be going somewhere else and there isn't really much of that going on. So I'm going to finish off the air guides and uh, then we'll have a closer look at the cooling system. Well, before we do that I can't let you guys go without a sneak peek on how this system is set up right now. So uh, these fans of course run on a uh, fan controller, they get about uh, two and a half, three volts, just enough to get them spinning. They really are being pushed as slow as they can go. They are 1850 RPM gentle typhoons and they can turn, they sit at about 300 RPM as it sits right now. Uh, same goes for the uh, Noctua, it's sitting at about 300 RPMs uh, and this guy is running actually on straight five volts, uh, putting it at uh, perhaps something similar. These are rather low rev fans and this one's running on a 22 ohm resistor from a 5 volt feed, so it's going just a tad slower than the centre one. So let's just turn the PC on. I have plenty of a microphone right in the middle of it and have a listen. So basically, the only noise we're having here is uh, these two fans. These three are very, very quiet. However, the noise we are getting out of these is more than I'd like to see. So, I'm thinking, since most of it is engine drive noise, I might actually go to the effort of the vibration proofing the plastic frames of these fans. I've actually done that in the past with other somewhat noisier fans, and it can make a difference. Uh, especially when you have laid motor drives, which these guys are actually excellent, very, very smooth. The uh, Noctua at this low speed has a bit of a knocking noise. It goes tick about once a second, like an old clock, uh, but uh, that's uh, not really audible at all when the case side is on. But these guys, they, uh, they sound a bit motory. There's something I do want to point out, is that none of these fans have any control at all. They are all running at a constant speed, and that is entirely intentional. Because with my last PC, the only time you could actually hear it was when the fans were revving up and down due to varying load conditions. 
this motherboard doesn't have very good hist hysteresis on the fan control, so they'd have a rather sharp increase in speed when the device just got under a heavy load, like when rendering video or playing a game and going into some heavier part of a map. This PC, I just want to make a constant noise because that is something you're going to mentally drown out. You're not going to hear it, even if it might be slightly louder. So, have a listen to when I do this. That's the sound of starting Prime95 on all cores on the CPU. It makes no difference, it just starts drawing a bunch more power and the same is true for GPU loads. And that is why these air guides are so important, because without them, these fans simply do not chuff enough air through the case to work without fan control. Alright, so the hours have rushed past and I've now put together the final iteration of this PC. So let's have a look inside into the absolutely ridiculous plywood mess we have inside. So I decided against using plastic for this panel since it uh, is sitting entirely flat against the case. There's no need to bend it. Uh, so it works very well with just a flat sheet of uh, wood. That's easier to work with and easier to maintain and sturdy and better in every way. Uh, so that's just uh, kind of sliding into the back there. It's got a couple of uh, screws which can slot out there. So we have toolless disassembly with a bit of dicking around that pops out to reveal our plastic air guides and giant red foam nose cones. Because I figured while we're doing this, we might as well go entirely ridiculous. So I have cut up these uh, foam uh, nose cones for the fans just in order to make the air flow ever so slightly better. Because if you don't have a nose cone on a fan, uh, there's a reason airplanes have it, and that is on the back side there, you're going to have a zone of low pressure right around there where the air is going to go. So the air is going to be coming out of a fan and just kind of swirling around there, uh, creating unnecessary turbulence. Uh, how much good these foam bits do, I really don't know. I mostly made them because I was uh, soundproofing this fan here and uh, uh, I just figured I might as well put uh, some foam on there just to kill a bit more of the bearing noise. There's a bit of a ball bearing scratchy noise coming out of these and it does a decent job of that. But I figured uh, while I'm at it, cutting foam might as well make little foamy cones for those as well. So the air guides are cut out of thin plastic sheets which are ripped out of the uh, panel assembly of an old TV. They are very thin but uh, decent to work with. You can just cut these with scissors and uh, the mounting system is the most basic you could possibly have. In the bottom they're just slotted in between the fans there. The one going to the power supply is uh, slotted in underneath the uh, fan grill and the one at the top is uh, taped to uh, one piece onto the RAM and the other onto the CPU cooler. Uh, <laughs> giving us a lovely view of the fantastic nose cone. I am proud of that. That is a feat of engineering. Uh, so I have also soundproofed uh, these uh, gentle typhoon fans slightly. I've put some damping material on them and it does make a difference. Uh, there's considerably more on the top one. So if we knock them, that's how that sounds. Our bottom one, it has a bit more of a plasticky rattly noise to it. So it does help. Uh, I don't have a, an SPL meter, so I can't quantify it for you. I'm just doing this for fun. It's not scientific. At the back you can see my absolutely lovely uh, wood MDF uh, panel mains. Uh, I made a couple of different uh, variants of these, so that's why they look so weird. But uh, the main mounting system is that the wooden plate slides between these guys and just uh, basically pinches in place over the back. It works very well. This one's just supporting it so that it doesn't rest against the GPU. And in the bottom, it slots between some metal work down there. It works very well. I have also taped shut all of the vents around the back because a lot of air was escaping there. So we obviously want to guide all the air going straight up since we're doing an entirely vertical design where we can rely heavily on convection to help us along. I'm not going to show you more than a picture of a back loom because that's just entirely terrible. Uh, but really, 
Well, that is about it. And uh, right now the PT is sitting, here running Fermark and uh, Prime 95 at the highest power settings. It's just drawing the 220 or so watts that it always does at full load. And let's have a look at what happened when I took the air guiding case off. Look at that, um, the GPU is shooting up just because the air guides aren't functioning properly. So I'm very happy to see that because it is telling me that all the work I've put in is at least having an effect. As far as processor temperatures though, uh, they don't really make much of a difference. Uh, I've targeted uh, under 90 degrees uh, with the fans at low speed and uh, that's uh, under this Prime 95 and GPU load. Uh, this is a high temperature, but this is also not a realistic workload that this PC is ever going to see. So I'm uh, going to see temperatures far lower than that in normal everyday use. Uh, 90 degrees is just what I like to call an absolute maximum. So that really is about it. And I'm dying to put my new, new PC back upstairs and do some work on it. So I'm going to have to thank you for watching and make sure you enjoy yourselves. Meep, meep.